Jesus not only provided us with forgiveness of sin, but he gave us the power to forever rule over sin. In his message, Victory Over Sin, Stephen Frazier shares truths that will enable you to never be brought under the power of anything ever again. To order this 4CD teaching series, call 888-542-2555 or go to our website at lofbc.org. Victory Over Sin, it belongs to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in a verse 12, it says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. This needs to be the attitude of every born-again child of God. We need to have this same attitude that the Apostle Paul had by the Holy Spirit. We need to have the attitude that I will not be brought under the power of anything. I will not be a slave to anything. Jesus said, he who commits sin is a slave to sin. He who commits sin is a slave to sin. You know, anybody that's in sin is a slave to that sin. And so we don't want to be slaves of sin. You know, Jesus came to set us free. He goes on to say, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Well, in its context, he's talking about free from sin. Amen. Has Jesus set you free? Well, thank God, then we will not be brought under the power of anything. We're not going to be made slaves by anything or to anything. We're not going to let anything be our master except our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the only master we're going to have ruling over us. And, of course, if we allow sin to rule over us, then we're allowing Satan to dominate our life, and he's not a good master. He'll make all kinds of promises to you, but you can't believe a thing he says. He's a liar, and he's the father of lies. And so we want to walk in the liberty that Christ has given us. We want to walk in the freedom of the Spirit, free from sin, where we sin no more. Hallelujah. Sin is not normal for us. And we've got to renew our mind with the Word of God. Unfortunately, there's much of the church world today that's uh, not helping to renew our minds in these areas, but we're actually, a, a lot of folks say, well, we're just old sinners, saved by grace, and, and nobody's perfect, we're just forgiven, and, and all these kind of things we're hearing all the time in the church world, and it's only compounding the problem. It's keeping people in a state of an unrenewed mind living in sin. Victims to sin, victims to Satan in bondage in life. And God wants us out of bondage, and I want to be out of bondage, don't you? I want to walk in freedom. I don't want to be dominated by sin, Satan, or any other kind of evil, ugly thing. Hallelujah. And so, you know, in review, quickly, because I like putting these scriptures together and review them, and just so that we hear them and allow our faith to be strengthened constantly in these truths. Uh, John 5 14 Jesus said see you've been made well sin no more thank God you can sin no more he said in John 8 11, neither do I condemn you go and sin no more hallelujah Ephesians 4 26 says be angry and do not sin you don't have to give in to the pressure of sin uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 declares lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us we could lay sin aside first Peter 4 uh, 1 and 2 it says he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin in other words he has stopped sinning Amen. You're putting your flesh under. You know, we've got to be willing to suffer in the flesh, discipline ourselves. And if we'll do that, we will cease from sin. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Having died to sin, we might live for righteousness. Having died to sin. Hallelujah. Have people, dead, have people know dead people don't sin? Well, thank God we've died to sin. We're dead to sin. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33-34. Uh, it says, Awake to righteousness and do not sin. 1 John 2.21 declares these things I write to you so that you may not sin. Isn't this amazing? How much God is telling us you don't have to sin and I'm telling you not to do it. And of course when he tells you not to do it, he gives you the power not to do it because his words are with power. Amen. Uh, 1 John 3, you can read verses 4 through 9. 
but I'll just pull out some highlights. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. And then last time we talked about over there in Genesis chapter 4 where God said to Cain, he told him that sin was at the door and its desire was for him, but he could rule over it. He was telling Cain, who was really a fallen man with the fallen nature, he was telling him, you can rule over sin. And the primary way he was going to rule over sin was to abide in the presence of the Lord. He had still had access to the presence of God. And, uh, but of course, he failed to rule over sin. Number one, reason why he failed to rule over sin is because he didn't listen to God's voice in his conscience. God spoke to him, God warned him, and he didn't listen to God's voice. He didn't listen to the warning. And number two, he went out from the presence of the Lord. You got to watch about being too busy to get with God and to get in his presence. We want to learn to abide in the presence of the Lord. Of course, it's in his presence that there is strength and that there is victory. Right? In his presence is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we want to be in the presence of God. You cannot live a sin-free life, live victorious over the devil, live victorious over sin, and do it apart from God. God's not sitting back here with a mallet in his hand watching you saying, now watch yourself and do not sin. That's not how it, and we're out here, you know, and we're trying, I'm trying to do the right thing for you, God, 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 God. Because God's way up there, you know. He's way out there. And we're down here just trying to make it happen, you know, for him. No, that's not how it is. We're to be walking with him. We're to be abiding in him. What does abide mean? It means to remain. Literally, it means to remain. That word abide means to rem remain in a continual state of expectancy. I mean, stay in expectancy concerning him concerning his presence, concerning the reality of him. Stay in faith. Stay close to God. Let it become more and more real to you. The more real God is to you, the less power sin will have over you. That's being in his presence. It's being in that reality that he is. Just knowing that he is, knowing that he's here with me. Staying in that place of fellowship with him. That's where your strength is. And in that place, the more in his presence or the more in the spirit we are, the more conscious we are of spiritual things, the easier it will be to live free of sin. To rule over sin. But Cain did not stay in that place. The Bible says he went out from the presence of of the Lord. And of course, number three, Cain blamed others for his wrongs instead of judging himself. Instead of taking responsibility for his attitude, because it all started with an attitude. He had an attitude, a pro attitude problem. God, and God came to him and spoke to him about his attitude. He said, Cain, why has your countenance fallen? His countenance had fallen. He had a bad attitude, but he didn't deal with the attitude. He didn't take responsibility for himself. And as a result of that, sin would dominate him for the rest of his life. Him and his offspring. Remember, uh, your life and your actions affect more than you. They affect more than just you. You're affecting other people. So we must, we must be aware of what we do, how we act. You know, even though people might not be around, what you do, how you act, is releasing spiritual things to affect other people in our life. So we must beware of how we handle ourselves and what we do in life because we don't want to make things harder for others. We don't want to give the devil place in other people's lives as well as in our own life. Thank God we can shut the door on the devil. Hallelujah. It's so easy to shut the door on the devil. It's not hard to deal with the devil. Amen. Jesus whipped him already. Jesus defanged him. Hallelujah. I mean, on his belly he's crawling. I mean, he's got major issues. 
He's hurting. He's easy to dominate. All you got to do is invoke the name of Jesus. All you got to do is draw near to God and take authority over the devil in the name of Jesus. Cast him out. Tell him, get out. Stand your ground. And he will flee from you as in terror. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, so we, we thank God we can live above sin. Hallelujah. We can live free of sin. We don't have to be victims to it anymore. Now, there's a lot of folks in Christendom today that, uh, you know, they don't get excited about uh, the reality or hearing about being free from sin. There's folks, they're not, that doesn't get them happy. They don't want to hear that uh, they're free from sinning. They want to hear that they're free from the guilt of sinning while sinning. They want to hear about forgiveness without repentance. That's very popular today. That's where a lot of folks are at today. They love hearing how Jesus took their sins without ever having to give them up. But that's not this group. We like hearing about how we're free from sin. Isn't that right? And so that's why we're turning to Romans 6 and going to hear some more. Notice this in Romans chapter 6. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. So notice what the Bible, the New Testament is saying. Here. Should we continue in sin? What's the answer? We'll try not. Y'all try not. He didn't say try not. He said certainly not. Isn't that what he said? Should we continue in sin? Well, I mean, you know, being we're saved by the grace of God, should we, you know, we can continue in sin, right? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? We're dead to it. Somebody say, I'm dead to sin. See, when temptation starts coming, you need to look at it. When you, I mean, it, you might start really feeling it, man. You know, it comes at your mind. It comes at your feelings. You know, that's like we, we looked over there in Ephesians 4. It says, be angry, but do not sin. I mean, you can, you can feel anger. You can feel unlovely. But you can stay in the love of God. You can rule over those feelings. Right? So, man, when temptations come, you need to, you need to just speak to your flesh, speak to yourself, and, and, and say, you're dead. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. You need to remind yourself you're dead. I'm not alive to sin. I'm not living for sin. I'm dead to it. I've died to it. He goes on, uh, verse uh, 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Woo, glory be to God. We got a new life. Man, he didn't just forgive us. He gave us a new life, a new way of living. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, you and I have been raised with him. We've been raised with him. Raised up, bless God. We're not the same old creations that we were before we made Jesus the Lord of our lives. When we made Jesus the Lord of our life, we became new creations. And old things passed away. They died. The old life died. The old lifestyle died. Stop trying to go back to the old lifestyle. You know, I've seen Christian parents. You know, I have been coming along in the things of God. And they have children. And, uh, you know, they tell their, they, 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 you know, as their children are growing up. Now, 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 the children are being raised in the church. And the parents, you know, they didn't know anything about God when they were growing up. 
And so, you know, their children, they're raising them up, and their children start getting fleshy and, and start desiring the things of the world and things like that. And, and I've seen Christian parents let them get involved in those things. And when you, when you, when you question them about it, they say, well, I know what it was like when I was their age. You all, we all went through that when we were their age. And I think, well, you were a heathen at that age. You didn't know God. It should be different for your kids. Your kids shouldn't be growing up like the way you grew up when you didn't know Jesus. Come on, this is a new life. Your kids should be going a completely different way. That's inexcusable. We don't want that for our kids, what we had in our old lives, and think, well, that's just normal. Well, it's normal for heathens. It's not normal for Christians. Thank God. That's good news. No, thank God. We've been raised to a new life. Verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. My margin says, rendered inoperative. Inoperative. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. I mean, does it get much clearer than that? No longer slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Man, when you think about your past, you need to think, that isn't me. That was someone that died and was buried. That old life is gone, man. And and, and I like it. It's not just dead. But it's buried. It's buried. Some of you need to bring some closure to your life, to your old life. You need to have some closure. You just need to, you need to just face it. He's gone. The old man, he's gone. He's not coming back. Just face it. The old lifestyle, the old way of thinking, the old way of doing things, it's over. He's gone. Just, just get over it. I'm sorry. I know it hurts. But he's rested in peace. You and I are moving on. Hallelujah. We're moving on, man. That old man's dead. That old lifestyle's dead. So it's over. We're not living that way. We're not looking to live that way. We're learning about this new life that God's made for us, that he's placed us in. That's what we're looking to live now. Can you say amen? We were crucified. The old man was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Hallelujah. Verse 7. For he who has died has been freed from sin. See, this is talking more about being, this is talking more than just about being forgiven of sin. Can't you see that? He's not just saying, oh, you've been free from sin, you know, because you've been forgiven. Actually, when you were born again, you weren't forgiven of your sin. You were never forgiven of your sin. You were a sinner by nature. The old man I'm talking about, he was a sinner by nature. Isn't that right? And he was never forgiven. He was crucified. He was killed. He was buried. He died and was buried and is no more. He was never forgiven. He was removed. And a new you was born. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't forgive you. He annihilated you. Talking about the old man. He annihilated the old man. He didn't forgive him. You couldn't forgive that guy. He was too, he was too far gone. Jesus removed him. He doesn't exist. Well, God has forgiven me of all my past sins, huh? How far far back does your past go, really? Talking about you, the new man that's been born again. How far back does your past go? It goes back to the day that you were born again. That's how far back your past goes. The past before that is an old man. It's the old life, an old man. And that old man, he existed. We're not saying he didn't exist, but he died. And was 
buried deep, deep down. And tonight's message is helping to put more dirt on top of the old man's grave. And we're no longer slaves to sin. We've been freed from it. We've been freed from it. Ooh, hallelujah. Verse 8. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon or consider yourselves to be dead, indeed to sin. See, we're not dying. We're dead. <laughs> consider yourself to be dead, to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body. So he's telling you now, this is something you do. Amen. Now you've been freed from sin. <laughs> Jesus crucified the old sinner, buried him. You've been set free from it. Now, don't let it dominate you. Right. Know who you are. Don't let it rule over you anymore. You are in control. Somebody say, I'm in control. I'm in control. I, have control. I have control. Hallelujah. Thank God we got control. Yes. Self has control. We've got self-control. We've got control over this situation. We've got control over sin. We're not going to let it dominate it. Just like the Apostle Paul said. He said, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. I will not be, I will not be brought, I will not let it dominate me. Now, you might have tripped and fallen, gotten tripped up by temptation and sin, but friend, you get, you get yourself up, you dust yourself off and say, enough of that. You're not going to dominate me. You're not going to control me. And you know, the Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times. <coughs> seven times. Yet he will rise again. Was well, that seven times in a lifetime? Is that seven times in, a, in, in seven years? It, it could be seven times in seven seconds. It could be seven times in seven minutes. Right? But what is a righteous man? Have you been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Yes. Then what will you do? Rise again. We should never say, I just, I've done it a hundred times. I just got to get up. Get up, rock. Get back in there. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give in. God has it. God hasn't washed his hands of you. Why are you quitting on yourself? My God, if God's still for me. If, God, if God's still for me. Woo, glory be to God. Who and what can be against me? I will arise again. Well, I will, but not right now. <laughs> I know I will. I'll get back to those things someday. Today's the day. Today's the day. Stop letting the devil eat your lunch. Don't let him eat your lunch another day. Don't let him meddle in the affairs of your life another day. Put him under your feet. You've got to see sin as a devil. Because that's where it's coming from. You got to treat it like a devil. You got to hate it like a devil. Are you hearing me? You can't play with it. It's your enemy. It wants to kill you. Offering you pleasure. and Offering you answers to problems. And all it wants to do is kill you. Trying to give you a shortcut. Trying to give you a way around God's way of doing things. It's a lie. It's a setup. He's trying to set you up. That's how you have to see it. Amen. You, have to, you, have to, you have to see it that way and get angry about it. Get angry about it. When you see sin, you need to get, when you see sin, you need to get angry about it. You need to get mad at it. Mm, that infuriates me. 
You're going to pay for that devil. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why there's a lake of fire. It was made for folks just like you. That's where you're going. Oh, I tell them it all the time, all the time. All the, I'm doing it more now than ever before. I'm just telling them all the time. Oh, lake of fire. Yeah. It is written. It is written. It is written. I don't get tired of saying it. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are to be tormented day and night forever and ever. Imagine that. See, I have that conversation with the devil every time he comes over to fellowship with me. I'm, I'm, I am totally honest with you. He comes over to fellowship with me, he's going to get fellowship. Oh, you want to fellowship with me? Let's talk about this torment day and night forever and ever. Wow. How do you handle that? <laughs> Jesus not only provided us with forgiveness of sin, but he gave us the power to forever rule over sin. In his message, Victory Over Sin, Stephen Frazier shares truths that will enable you to never be brought under the power of anything ever again. To order this four CD teaching series, call 888-542-2555 or go to our website at lofbc.org. Victory over sin, it belongs to you. Ladies, it's time to register for the You Glow Girl Conference coming up October 24th through 26th at Life of Faith Bible Church. Experience the ministry of Jen Tringale. God is sending out, asking of you and I to step up, to step out of our comfort zones, and to step into the more. And conference host, Jean Fraser. Rise up, rise up. Deborah's arise. Deborah's arise. Deborah's arise. Let out your roar. That's what he's on the inside of you for. Enjoy a delicious lunch and fellowship with women of like faith. There will also be a special impartation service that is sure to transform your life. For more information and to register, go to genefraser.org or call 502-240-0016. The You Glow Girl Conference. Come and be transformed into the woman you were created to be. For a CD or DVD of today's message, write to us at Life of Faith Bible Church, 14200 Spiegel Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299. Or call 1-888-542-2555. You can also visit us online at lofbc.org.